الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, when a person has committed a sin, do they deserve a second chance? That is a very important question. In order to answer it, we must look at both sides of the coin. The first is when the person has committed a sin between them and Allah. And the second is when a person has committed a sin between them and a fellow human being. The first one known as Hukukullah, in the rights of Allah, someone has faulted, someone committed adultery, someone has consumed intoxicants, someone has not fulfilled their prayers that are obligatory, someone may have not dressed appropriately or has behaved in an immoral way. These are sins that are committed between you and Allah. And these sins are such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about them. He tells us that yes, he wants us to change our ways and habits. And yes, there is hope for us and there will always be hope for us. So if we were to answer that question, do you deserve a second chance? The answer is yes, indeed, you deserve a second and a third and a fourth and as many chances as you wish. For as long as Allah's mercy is greater and you know that it's greater than the sins that you are committing between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So turn to Allah before it is too late. Because what we have been taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if there are sins committed between you and Allah in the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the involvement of another human being, then there are four conditions for the sin to be forgiven. The first is you must admit the sin. The second is you must regret it. The third is you must repent, seek the forgiveness of Allah. And the fourth is that you must promise never to commit the sin again. Subhanallah. So one might wonder, well, if we are promising Allah never to commit the sin again, what if we've committed the sin again? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly tells us that if a person is genuine at the time of seeking forgiveness, they did promise Allah that they won't do it again. And that promise was powerful. It was strong. It was definitely a true promise. Allah says we would have wiped that sin out immediately. The chances of you not being forgiven are far slimmer than those of you being forgiven. So have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, it is highly unlikely that there would ever be a circumstance where you are genuine in repenting to Allah and he does not forgive you. So don't let shaitan overtake you by making you think that you are beyond repair or that you are not worthy of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is also a trap of the devil. A trap of shaitan, he keeps trying and he keeps his traps all over such that he wants us to be misguided once again after we found the guidance. My brothers and sisters, remember as much as we should be talking about the hope in the mercy of Allah, we should also be speaking about the fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striking the balance between the two is something absolutely important, my brothers and sisters. Let's understand that a person who does not have that correct balance will falter. Those who sin with false hope in the mercy of Allah have a very small chance of being forgiven by Allah because to sin out of defiance of Allah is actually disbelief to say, Oh Allah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. But if someone were to say, Oh Allah, because you've made this prohibited, I'm going to defy you. That would immediately be considered as disbelief. But if someone were to say, Oh Allah, I know what is halal. I know what is haram. I believe that halal is what you've made halal. And I believe that haram is what you've declared haram. But out of human weakness, I have sinned. I have faltered. 
please forgive me. Allah will forgive you because you've recognized him. He is the decider. He's the one who declared what was permissible, what was prohibited. And you know he can either punish you or forgive you. The fact that you sinned out of human weakness and not out of defiance of Allah is of essence. That is what makes you a true believer. When you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord, he is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most kind, the most compassionate and so on. And this is why if a person were to commit a sin and they were to seek true forgiveness of Allah and then out of human weakness, after having promised Allah not to repeat the sin, they happened to fall back into it and they seek the forgiveness again. Allah says, we will forgive you the second time for as long as you have sought true forgiveness and promised again that you won't do it. And if you were genuine at the time of seeking forgiveness, even the second time, then you happened to fall into it a third time later on in your life. For as long as you were genuine at the time of seeking forgiveness, for the third time, he will forgive you. And for the fourth and the fifth and so on, it is unlimited until the day you actually die. But that does not mean that now you begin to sin, hoping in the mercy of Allah. Because that too is a very dangerous game to play. My brothers and sisters, our relationship with Allah Almighty is not a game. So we can never ever say that because I know Allah is most merciful, that is why I'm going to sin. If we were to say that, we would be totally wrong. We would actually be, like I said, playing a game with the mercy of Allah. But rather, out of human weakness, you've committed a sin you stand a great chance of being forgiven instantly as soon as you seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he speaks to the angels regarding a person who's committed a sin once and then sought sincere forgiveness, fallen into it again and then sought sincere forgiveness, promising never to do it again, falling into it a third time and then seeking forgiveness a third time, sincerely saying and promising that he or she will not repeat it. Allah says to his angels, Alima abdi anna lahu rabban ya'khudu biddhambi wa yaghfiruh ushidukum anni ghafartu lah. My worshipper, knows and believes that he has a Lord who can either punish him for the sins or forgive him. So I want you to bear witness that I have totally forgiven him. Subhanallah. Look at Allah. The fact that the worshiper recognizes the power of Allah, the fact that he is Lord, the fact that he can forgive or he can punish. And that is why we keep seeking forgiveness. Allah says, I want you to bear witness. I've forgiven him. May Allah grant us forgiveness. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, this is why the Prophet ﷺ tells us about the good news for the one on whose pages on the Day of Judgment, lots of repentance is found. Tuba liman wujida fi sahifatihi istighfaran kathira. Give good news of a lofty place in paradise to the one on whose pages lots of repentance is found. So seek the forgiveness of Allah on a daily basis. We are human beings and it is only human that we will falter. The hadith in Sahih Muslim says, if mankind did not sin, Allah would have come with another species who would have sinned and sought the forgiveness of Allah. This hadith does not mean that we should commit sin, but it means we should have hope in the mercy of Allah after having committed sin, no matter what sin it is. And like I said, we are speaking here so far about the rights of Allah. Like I said, if a person has committed adultery or consumed intoxicants or dressed inappropriately, etc., or missed their prayers, these are from the rights of Allah that you have sinned. And therefore, there is great hope in the mercy of Allah when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, again, we hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Furqan, 
إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات. He makes an exception when it comes to mentioning punishment and says those who have sought the forgiveness of Allah repented and changed their ways thereafter. For them, the reward will be not only paradise, but Allah will convert their bad deeds as good deeds on the right side of the scales on the day of judgment. For indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Why and when would Allah do that? The answer is simple. If a person committed sin or led a life full of sin and then repented in a way that they never ever went back to those bad ways because of their love of Allah and their relationship with Allah and the fear of the punishment of Allah, Allah says, you know what? We will convert those bad deeds they did in their previous life into good deeds on the right side of the scale simply because they quit those sins for our love, for our sake. And nothing was stopping them from it besides their relationship with Allah. They deserve an abundance in reward. That's what Allah says. Amazing. So if a person has changed their lives in a way that they did not go back to those sins, good news to such people. May Allah make us from among them. But if a person fell back, Allah says, although we forgave you the first time, we're telling you we will still forgive you the second and the third and the fourth and as many times for as long as you're breathing, you're alive and you have not got to the point of gargara, meaning the angel of death has not started taking your soul away. There is still hope. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lovely turning point. My brothers and sisters, these are the verses of hope, the verses of mercy, the verses of kindness. But we have one major problem. The problem is human beings are not as merciful as Allah. Human beings at times are very unforgiving. They may never give you a second chance. In fact, they may judge you wrongly when you haven't even sinned. That is the test that Allah places in your lives and mine. And this is why when someone has wronged you as a human being, you are encouraged to overlook and forgive. Forgive and embrace. Wouldn't you like Allah for, for, to forgive you? In fact, it is addressed in the third person. Would they not like Allah to forgive them? So Allah is encouraging us to forgive others. And Allah is encouraging us to overlook. But that's not easy. When do I give a person a second chance? If someone has abused me, tortured me, someone has done something nasty, they've stolen my wealth, they've sworn at me, they have harmed me, they may have done something really disastrous. My brothers and sisters, it is your right not to forgive. It is your right not to forgive, but Allah strongly recommends you to forgive. Allah tells you in beautiful, powerful words, encouraging you on the highest level to say, forgive the person, find it in your heart to forgive them. So you may choose to forgive and embrace if that person is genuine and they are seeking forgiveness and you see that their attitude has changed completely. You may choose to forgive and embrace which means you go back to how it used to be before, but you have a right not to do that. If the person is seeking your forgiveness, but you are wary about whether or not they are genuine, you're wary about whether or not they have changed their ways or habits, you can forgive them, but you don't need to embrace them because the two are different acts of worship. Subhanallah. I forgive someone. But because I don't want to be bitten by them again, I will stay away from them. There is nothing wrong with that. You can keep a safe distance in order to safeguard yourself from what has happened in the past. You would not be foolish, especially when the genuineness is not so manifest in the people or the person who is seeking your forgiveness. Then sometimes they may not seek your forgiveness and perhaps they may never have changed. 
You can still find it in your heart to forgive them, but you don't need to embrace them. If you do, obviously it will be something good. But if you don't, in order to protect yourself, it is not bad either. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So to forgive people and to tell yourself, oh, I have forgiven this person for the sake of Allah, even though they may not have sought that forgiveness, that is something Allah asks you to do. Then we have another scenario where we say, I forgive this person, but I would like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show them that they were wrong, to show them or perhaps to let them have a lesson so that they don't do it to others or so that others are protected from that. That is probably one of the lower levels when forgiving people. So you've forgiven them, released it from your heart, but you have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them a lesson. Subhanallah. It is also okay to do that, but it is something that is of a lower level. And the lowest level, which is also your right, is to say, I don't want to forgive this person. Allah tells us many times in the Quran, try to avoid that. Try to forgive them. Find it in your heart. Even if you're going to stay away from them, don't hold it in your heart. It probably has a greater burden within your heart and your shoulders than it has for them. So release it, even if you're releasing it on the lowest level of release, but let it go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good understanding. My brothers and sisters, so do people deserve a second chance? I've just told you when it comes to the sins they commit between them and Allah, Allah will give them as many chances as they wish for as long as they are doing the right thing when seeking the forgiveness of Allah. A person said something wrong. They did something wrong. They deserve a second and a third chance when those are taken from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when they have wronged another human being, that human being may not forgive them. Now, in today's world, people commit sins. And sometimes these sins are made apparent to the rest of us. Remember my brothers and sisters as much as we gleefully sometimes enjoy to expose them and their sin and we don't realize it was a sin committed between them and Allah. And if you were to expose those sins, perhaps Allah may expose you if it was a sin between them and Allah. Yes, we should talk about it in a positive way, bearing in mind these are our brothers and sisters in faith. They are our brothers and sisters in humanity. We're meant to reach out to them, not to make them suicidal simply because the whole world has excommunicated them for a bad habit that they had or for something they did in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are remorseful. If people are remorseful and they are seeking the forgiveness, you need to know if that was from the rights of Allah. Who are you as a human being to say that they will never ever be accepted again? May Allah forgive us. The term used nowadays is cancelled. Such and such a person is cancelled simply because they said or did something that may actually be forgivable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are we as human beings not to give a person a second chance? If we were taught by Allah never to give a person who faltered or wronged a second chance, none of us would ever have a second chance in life. So I'm advising you, my brothers and sisters, go easy on others. Allah will go easy on you. Remember, they are human. They suffer and struggle the consequences of your words, your actions way beyond their sin was forgiven by Allah. So be careful because now the sin is actually yours. We don't enjoy exposing people ever. If you're a true believer, you will never enjoy to expose people. Why are you exposing them? If they deserve to be exposed because of the evil that came from them, it's not because we enjoy it, but it is because we'd like to save others or perhaps teach people a lesson. So remember this, it's never the enjoyment. When people begin to enjoy exposing others, they are doing it for shaitan, not for Allah. But when people are exposing the little that they have to for the correct reasons, and they are not enjoying it at all, and it pains them, and they are still reaching out to those who have wronged in a positive way, 
stretching an arm of goodness and reconciliation to them, then they may well be doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the ability to do whatever we do for His sake, the sake of Allah. So bear in mind, my brothers and sisters, man is not Ghafoor Rahim. He is not most forgiving, most merciful. That is Allah. Allah will give you many, many chances. Man will not give you many chances, unfortunately. But Allah encourages us because we are all human. Never write off a person simply because they've done something wrong. Many times people serve a prison period or correctional services. They have served their sentence. We refuse to embrace them when they come out of that sentence. We think they don't deserve another chance. We treat them badly. Is that what Allah wants? Subhanallah. If you were to be excommunicated because of a sin you've committed, every single one of us would be excommunicated. Just because Allah has covered you does not mean you're innocent. It means you're equally guilty, but you're fortunate that Allah has not exposed you. So go easy on others and Allah will go easy on you. My brothers and sisters, those who have been released from the prisons, those who have come out from the correctional services, those who are serving time there, you are our brothers and our sisters. We stretch an arm of reconciliation with you. We will try our best to reintroduce you into community and society. Those of you, my brothers and sisters who have wronged and faulted, you are still our brothers and sisters. If you have wronged someone, make peace with them, seek forgiveness from them. They may not forgive you. But if you've wronged Allah, seek forgiveness from Allah. He will always forgive you and we will help reintroduce you into society in a way that will definitely be an example for humanity at large. We're human beings. We all falter. We all commit sins. Yes, I do know the magnitude of the crime also matters. It does. It takes longer for people who've committed major, major sins to be forgiven or to be reintroduced into society and community. But still, we are asked by Allah to give people another chance. To give people another chance. If Allah gives someone a chance, why is it that we won't? My brothers and sisters, I'd like to make a quick clarification about marriage. Nobody should use what I've said to blackmail a person who's being abused into remaining in a relationship when they are being abused to the degree that they cannot cope anymore. No, my brothers and sisters, remember it's the mercy of Allah. If a person really cannot manage in a relationship and they are struggling in it, they have the right to seek the termination of that marriage or that relationship. They have a right. So let's not usurp that right by telling them you have to bear with whatever we're doing against you or with whatever the circumstances are against you. That is false. You don't have to bear it all. If you cannot manage, you cannot cope. And if you are struggling, you have the right to seek help. And if need be, you may terminate that relationship. Remember that. But my brothers and sisters, let's have mercy on those who've come back, those who've repented when it comes to other sins. There are people who sometimes their sins are exposed to us and we were not supposed to have known those sins. Would we look at them with the eye of skepticism for the rest of our lives when we know that they sought forgiveness or they are repenting? That's what I'm talking about. We need to make sure, like I said, and this is the third time I'm saying it, go easy on them and Allah will go easy on you. My brothers and sisters, may Allah give us chance after chance. We are human. But let's not abuse that and let's not misinterpret the term hope in the mercy of Allah. But my brothers and sisters, let's also learn to be merciful to others. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam says, La yarhamillahu man la yarhamin nas. Allah does not have mercy upon those who don't have mercy on other people. May Allah never expose us. I promise you, if we had to sin, in fact, if, if our sins were exposed to others, we probably would be in a worse position than those whose sins have been exposed to us. So let's not play the nobleman by trying to belittle others instead of helping them 
and we need to strike the balance between helping them dealing with the matter ensuring that that is not done again and at the same time seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad